Hi guys, right, this video is in answer to uh, a Facebook friend uh, who apparently he practiced some sort of Buddha or some sort of Japanese art and what happened was that he saw one of my videos, the video was, uh, uh, was a demonstration on the wooden dummy and he noticed that I faced the dummy square on quite a lot, even when I move around the dummy I was still very much facing the dummy, facing the dummy throughout. So he was probably quite intrigued with this, so he, so he asked me through a message, why is it that we face the opponent the way we do? Okay, so that's an answer to that. Um, and with a lot of these things, it's good to know the, the context of the whole thing. Okay, now most martial arts concentrate on one area and then have the other areas uh, they don't develop as much or kept a little bit more basic. For instance, with striking arts, with long range striking arts, then you tend to have some sort of stance that leads in one way or another. And in leading, and then you do the kicking, the punching, keep it at long range, etc. Then when it comes to the grabbing, they have very little of it. They tend to have some, they tend to have some throws as well, but not a lot. And some don't have any groundwork. And Wing Chun, officially speaking, doesn't really have that much groundwork at all. So, you've got to look at the contest in, uh, in that respect. Now, Wing Chun is close quarter striking. Okay, so the key here is that it's close quarter striking and it's a continuous strike. Okay, now just to give you a bit of a, 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 a contrast and comparison, if we did an art which is long range striking, so if we go into some sort of stance here, okay, so we're at some sort of distance, we're moving like this. So I've got a right hand lead in this case and he's got a left hand lead. So in the contest, in the competition, we're looking for that first opening, we're testing, then we're moving with, with other stuff. Or maybe it's going to be a low kick, okay? So here he's got his left jab, and he'll be feeling out and thinking what to do on, on this one. We're moving around, feeling for what we're going to do, how to set up our behind the jab, etc. Now, with Wing Chun, it tends to bypass that part. I'm not saying we don't have that range, we do have that range. But we bypass it. Why? Because we're in this situation, Say he's jabs, he's coming as jabs. Maybe I pack and go in and then move in. But once I'm in this position, I don't stay here. He move, he might move back and I'm still hitting it. I'm still hitting it. And here I'm more open this way. So you see this type of movement in the wooden dummy. Okay? So we're moving here like this. Okay? But I'm keeping these this contact you see, both hands on him throughout. And as I'm keeping throughout, I am very much facing him. Doesn't matter how I move him. I'm going to control him, I'm going to control him for moving here. Maybe I move to here, maybe I control there. But I'm still facing him. Okay? What I'm not doing is stay on the outside, jab and hit him from here, hit him from here. Okay? Wing Chun don't do that. Wing Chun gets in and it's bam, 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 bam. And moves in very, very quickly. So I hope this can answer your question. It's close quarters. But once we get in, we stick in. So one of the cons of Wing Chun, it says, what comes, you receive, and then if it leaves, you stick with them. So you stick onto them, and that's how we approach uh, the combat.